COVID has curbed Waitangi commemorations for the Māori Party. The co-leaders have decided not to travel north because of concerns over the latest community cases. Three people have caught the more contagious South Africa strain of the virus while in MIQ at Auckland's Pullman Hotel, but were released into the community before it was picked up. The hotel shut to new guests until authorities work out how it spread. Te Pāti Māori says it's decided to err on the side of caution. Co-leader Debbie Nari Wapaka joins me now. Kia ora, Debbie. Why have you decided not to head north? Oh, look, I, I think it's um, important for us to be able to do what we can do to um, ease the anxiety and the weight that a, lo- you know, a lot of local, and including our um, tangata whenua, are feeling. And this is a um, practical way of being able to achieve that. The Director General Health and, and the Minister as well today at their um, press briefing said there was no reason to avoid travel and no reason to avoid Waitangi at the moment. So do you have any different information to what they have? Well, I think, um, first of all, we, we had information yesterday a lot sooner than before uh, Ministry of Health became public. Um, so there is a real chasm, a gap in between uh, what they uh, find out, what we hear from our whole order, and then what they release publicly. That puts us in a position of being really unsure of um, confidence on, in real-time information that we can, uh, I guess, adjust to as communities. The second thing is that we, Rawi and I, both um, come from vulnerable communities, as is um, in, in Taitokero. We are watching our whanau on the ground um, doing what they can do to deal with the uncertainties, and that includes putting up borders, that includes limiting... Um, movement, and I think this is something that we can do. We, you know, we can be vigilant. We can scan. We can um, keep up sanitisation, but we also can restrict our movements. And you now we feel for this community. We know exactly how we would feel if it was in Taranaki or in Tairawhiti. So um, we will always put waka papa first and politics second. So you say you've taken advice from your people. Uh, who mm. and, and what were they saying to you? What are their worries? Um, well, their worries are that they are unresourced um, and un, um, are under-resourced and underfunded. That there isn't the support uh, to look after them. We, we saw, uh, you know, a crazy influx of things when, uh, you know, the announcement first came out. Uh, they're worried that there's a lot of uncertainty. They're worried that there's assurance that everything's under control. Then, you know, 12 hours later, there's more. They're worried that centres that should have had everything under control, like MIQs, aren't and the world has shown us how tricky this virus is. It's highly contagious. And, you know, I think, you know, there are things that we can do to uh, mitigate risks. And for us, it is as, as simple as um, not, you know, creating more flow of traffic and people into the area. It's a long weekend, you know, and when everyone goes in and leaves, they're the ones that are, are left, um, you know, with the consequences. So yeah, this is about um, doing what's right by those that have to live there every day. Debbie, you mentioned the flow of information. What do you think of mm. the way the latest two cases, the information around that and how it was released? I, I think um, any time during a pandemic that we see uh, media stonewalled by officials, we should be extremely concerned. And it, it makes no sense why they would do that unless things weren't in place. That's, so, you know, I hate to sound churlish, but I was extremely concerned to watch the time... Um, delay between us, you know, all hearing and being asked by media and then finally having, uh, you know, a, a release coming out from the ministry and so late, so late before anybody can prepare. So it, it, it brings into question confidence that we have in the system. And, that, you know, that's OK. We, we are all going to be under stress. This is new, it's unprecedented. But we actually need to be forthcoming about that so we can front foot. We can use our influences collectively to be able to um, pivot to what the situations are. We can't treat this like um, bureaucrats do. We actually have to deal with this together, and this is the party Māori's way of being able to to do that. I I really urge that they, one, um, treat media with respect and bring out the information for us all as soon as they know. So, Debbie, you're not heading up to Waitangi, and, well, I'm wondering if you think the Prime Minister should still go. I, look, I, I think um, what the Prime Minister and the government do is, is up to them to decide. I think, you know, we as a party um, live and breathe Te Tiriti. We are, we are here to uphold uh, the Te Tiriti. If, you know, the government really wanted to do something, they could do something really simple, like, I don't know, maybe 
you know, change, amend the legislation that's um, as, as racist as the Māori wards that we're waiting for and Anaya to deal with. For us, I, I think it's the right thing to do. It's up for them, for them to decide what they do. Thank you for joining us this evening. That is the Māori mm, Party sure co-leader, Debbie Nariwa Packer.